Action is advised. They're the most violent motorcycle gang in America. They'll stay and they'll fight to the end. They are nomads, sowing terror and fear wherever they ride. We're the toughest giant in the valley, and you gotta back that up. They are the pagans, and their motto is do unto others, then split. Absolutely positively. Pennsylvania, from its steel mills to its sports teams. This is blue collar country, where people have been molded by harsh city streets and a Puritan work ethic. Its largest city, Philadelphia, has always identified itself with tough working class heroes, like favorite son, Rocky Balboa. Philadelphia has a reputation of being a tough town. You know, their fans are tough. Um, they like to see their sports teams win, and when they don't, they're not happy. The city of brotherly love can be anything but. The criminal underbelly of Philly has always been evident. Jimmy D, who's ridden these streets as a pagan, knows it well. One for all, all for one. That let's die together. Let's fight together. Let's f together. That's the bond. The motorcycles and the brotherhood. Everything that comes after that comes after that. For ten years, Jimmy D and the Pagans ran Philadelphia with brute force. It's always been Pagan territory. Always been their turf. They've always let other biker organizations and biker gangs know that this is our place. The Pagans are a one percenter club that proudly proclaims its outlaw status. 99% of the people in this world live by society's rules, obligations, and socially accepted behavior. 1% do not. 1% are outlaws. F the world. This is what we live by. This philosophy has led them to become the most secretive and nomadic of the large motorcycle gangs. They don't have national or chapter clubhouses. They don't like law enforcement to even know where they're from, opting to forego patches representing their home state. What they have is uh, three to 400 members. The Pagan's territory can be found in states like Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, Maryland, and Virginia. Their sheer brutality often makes up for being outnumbered. What uh, defines them is the, their propensity to do violence. They're a very violent group. They're a nomadic group. They are to themselves quite introverted as a gang. Uh, a lot of antisocial behavior. The Pagans have been linked to assaults, theft, and extortion, as well as weapons and drug trafficking. From menial bull nothing to murder. Jimmy D is proud of his life as a one percenter. He joined in 1972, giving up a college football career to pursue an outlaw lifestyle. What happened was I was working in a gas station at night when I was going to college. At 3 a.m., there's only two people out, cops and robbers. So the Pegans would roll in after the bars closed on their motorcycles. I got to meet them, know them. One thing led to another. Jimmy D's life took a turn toward the dark side. That's when he developed what he calls his jacket. The violence in my jacket is part of being a Pegan. Most of that was barroom brawls, inner club wars, bikers against bikers. All of that is part of being a pagan. That's everyday life. Bottom line is, you don't take crap from anybody. Denny asked to have his identity concealed.
Trotsky was taught to value brotherhood and violence above all else. You just all go down together. You, know, you go in together, you walk out together. Simple as that. Denny got to know the Pagans in New York. You wanted to ride on Long Island and wear a patch, you were Pagan. That was it. There was no, no ifs, ands, or buts. It wasn't long before he felt like part of the crew. I got to do here and there, and they always had my back, or I'd have their back, whatever, so it worked out good. Denny joined in the early 90s. His sponsor made sure he knew who his enemies were from the day Denny swore his oath. I went to his house and said, listen, we all want you to prospect. We want you to be a pagan. We want you to make sure that you know we're war with Hell's Angels. The Hell's Angels are the pagan's mortal enemy and the largest motorcycle gang in the world. Denny never forgot it becoming a loyal and effective soldier in the war between the two gangs. You ever smell old blood? Um, pulling teeth out of your knuckles, pulling teeth out of your axe handles, pieces of brain. Uh, I mean, I've, I've seen some tough beatings, some nasty The battle between the Pagans and the Hells Angels has been raging for decades, often with deadly consequences. February 23rd, 2002, Plainview, New York. The Pagans gathered at a bar called Diamonds. Many had traveled from out of state, including the crew from Philly. Dave Hennenlauter, a Nassau County detective, was there that day. You had guys from, from all over the regions coming. Some of them didn't even know why they were coming up. They were told, hey, we're going on a run. You got to go to Long Island. A run is a trip the gang takes together. This run was a mandatory, meaning the gang didn't have a choice. Mandatory is someplace you're going, whether you want to or not, whether you, your wife's having a baby, whatever's going on, you're going. When the pagans arrived, they were told to get ready to do battle with the Hells Angels. Their enemies were holding a tattoo and motorcycle convention called the Hellraiser's Ball at a nearby convention center. This was the first event that the Hells Angel had sponsored in Nassau County. The Pagans felt it was an insult for the Angels to be holding an event on Long Island, a Pagan stronghold. They wanted revenge and knew they'd have to pay a price to get it. Some of these guys wrote their wills. They wrote wills on napkins. One guy, he, he uh, left his, his motorcycle to his daughter. You know, so they, you know, they, these guys prepared themselves because they didn't think they were coming back. The Hellraiser's Ball was open to the public, meaning there were plenty of women and children mixed in with the gang members. Hennenlauter was doing surveillance at the event. I was in there with a camera. I was in there like a regular civilian, taking photographs. This man, Detective Smith, asked to have his identity concealed. He was working undercover with the New York State Police at the event. There were more than 300 people in outside. There were several hundred or more. Everything was real calm. There was no problem until uh, Pagan showed up and uh, all hell broke loose. Hennen Lauder was outside in the parking lot when the altercation started. When the Pagans came up, they parked their cars along here, and they got out and they walked up here. The Pagans knew it was on because they all came out with clubs. And you see them walking in with uh, their axe handles. Detective Smith saw the first Pagan come through the door. I hear this roar. And then within a few seconds, this pagan, well over six foot, well over 300 pounds, is yelling. He had in his hands a piece of lumber, not a finished axe handle or a two by four, just a big stick. 